How are you guys approaching 3D differently from uh, Real D and other players that are selling 3D technology? So we really try to cater towards the exhibitors' requirements. On a, on a in a traditional theater, they like to play on a white screen. They like to move movies around from screen to screen. So our goal was to come up with a system that used the standard white screen, um, but also to use passive glasses without any batteries that need changing and replacing. So the system that we have developed uses sophisticated color interference technology that gives a full color spectrum for each eye. Um, it's made up from a red, green and blue for the left and then a slightly different red, green and blue for the right. Mm -hmm. There's a filter inside the projector that does the filtering for the left and the right eye and then the filters in the glasses are complementary to the, that filter in the projector that then allows the left image to go to the left eye and the right image to go to the right eye. Um, the advantage of putting the filter inside the projector means that the image does not go through any filtering uh, unlike uh, the other systems. So we get full color and beautiful crisp and clear pictures on the screen. The advantage of using the white screen means that this, the picture looks beautiful from the outset and moreover every seat in the auditorium has a great picture because a white screen is uh, provides that benefit. Is there a cost benefit too that could make this the solution that's more widely embraced by exhibitors? So the hardware itself uh, we believe is is very cost effective compared to other systems. Uh, the glasses... Just ballpark, I mean half as much, a third as much? So the... Um, the hardware and software is under $20,000, mm -hmm. and then the glasses are used multiple times. So there's a cost advantage there because the glasses come in at about $0.20 cents per use. Mm -hmm. And um, what it, what's the first uh, big release that people will be able to see the Dolby Digital Cinema 3D system? Or maybe I'm calling it by the wrong name. You probably have something... Pithier. 3D digital cinema is uh -huh. correct, and uh, we're installing theaters as we speak. Uh, the first ones that get installed will be playing Disney's Nightmare Before Christmas, mm -hmm. um, but the main push uh, is for Paramount's Beowulf, which mm -hmm. opens on November 16th. Mm -hmm. And I guess just last question is, how do you see the future of digital 3D playing out? I mean, is this a sort of thing that your end game is, well, there'll be one or two auditoriums in every multiplex that'll be able to play 3D content? We see 3D as the wow factor that digital cinema needed to get digital cinema really moving. And um, it's, it's clearly taken off in the imagination of the movie makers in Hollywood, and lots of movies are being made that way, and exhibitors love it because the audiences love it. It's a, it's a great movie-going experience that mm -hmm. you can only have in the theater and not in the home. Mm -hmm. So it, it's great for everybody who goes to the movies. Um, how widely deployed it gets will obviously depend on how many movies come out. It's the old chicken and the egg situation. Mm -hmm. Without theaters, there'll be fewer movies and more movies, more theaters. So, But it seemed like you were saying when we were talking before that some studios, some content, uh, you know, some producers could see 5,000 screens as an important threshold where, okay, this is a market where we feel like we can make, you know, we can make some real money with a release? It's clearly still expensive to convert a 2D film into 3D. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a release for 3D only, then you need to be able to exploit that on a large number of screens. Mm -hmm. But we've seen with our previous technologies that... Um, it very much varies from country to country and mm -hmm. from movie to movie. What is that threshold that makes somebody invest in the production techniques mm -hmm. that allows it to go into the theater, whether it was surround sound or whether it was digital audio, and now whether it's 3D. What's the number of 3D screens in the U.S. today, roughly? It's roughly 700. Uh-huh. So what's the lowest you think that threshold could be? Is it, you know... Well, there's already been five movies out in 3D, so uh -huh. it's already met the threshold okay. for those new movies. Fair enough. Um, so you're talking more about converting, you know, converting older yeah. movies, you might have to get to a slightly higher If you're going threshold. to release a movie in 3D only, which clearly is on the horizon, and mm -hmm. some directors want to do that, 
then they need to make their money back from the production techniques. And the, the production techniques are anywhere between 10 and $18 million mm -hmm. to do that conversion. So they need to be uh, feel confident that they can recoup that kind of investment mm -hmm. from many, many screens. And that number you just cited is, is really for converting an older movie into 3D, yeah. not for, I mean, starting shooting a movie in 3D from scratch could be right. just the same budget as a regular a regular film right you're just paying for the you know paying uh, maybe a little extra for the 3d camera uh yeah and, and obviously there's more complicated production post-production techniques mm -hmm. as well in terms of everything you do you have to do it to two images mm -hmm. and you have to keep it perfectly in sync one thing that's been interesting to me just and this is something that hadn't occurred to me before is that you know in the 1950s with 3d there were some independent i think in the 50s and 60s there were some independent releases in 3d i think the first one Buona Devil was actually an independent producer that kind of kicked off the 3D craze. Do you think we could see some independent directors and producers um, releasing 3D pictures? I think we'll see the whole range right now, of course. It's the, the big studio pictures, but we also have little independent movies like Fly Me to the Moon, which is mm -hmm. going to be released in February. Uh, it's a small production company out of Belgium. Um, it's the same in, with any technology, you know, all you need is an enthusiastic director who wants mm -hmm. to employ that technology mm -hmm. and um, whatever size budget movie is working on, he'll make it work within that budget. Um, we certainly saw that with, with the launch of Surround Sound and, and Dolby Digital. That, um, and also the, the argument of does, does a technology only apply to a certain type of movie? Um, early on in surround sound, the surround is only worthwhile for action movies, but mm -hmm. of course now every movie has surround sound, um, same as every movie is in color, uh, and the same as every movie is now in digital audio when they said it was only going to be used for Batman and, and those types of movies. And I think the same thing is now being said of 3D. Is it's it only, only for it's kids' only movies. For it's, movies, yeah. kids' cartoon movies, or, or, or the big blockbusters. But, um, you know, we see life in 3D, so why shouldn't we see our movies in 3D? So I believe it'll be on every movie in the future. Cool. Well, thanks for talking with us. You're welcome.